Yeah, hi folks. Yes, Matthew Tukaki is making it up every day. He's lying through his teeth every day. But first I want to show you an article about Labour's so-called Three Waters Reform, which has been marketed as saving everyone money. But that couldn't be further from the truth. It's racist, hipuapua, separatism on steroids. And hat tip to Angelica for this one. He poor poor in action, Labour's three waters reform. F reform, really? How can it be reform when iwi get control? Minister Mahuta's plan will result in freshwater, stormwater and wastewater assets and infrastructure owned and controlled by the country's 67 local authorities and paid for by generations of ratepayers being transferred to four new regional water agencies, 50-50 co-governed by iwi. Although local authorities will provide all of the assets, they will be given only 50% of the control. The other 50% will be given to local iwi. Not only will councils effectively have control of their assets cut in half, cabinet papers reveal an extraordinary requirement. All decisions undertaken by these new agencies will require a supermajority decision of 75%. That means no decisions can be made without the approval of iwi. In effect, iwi will have veto right and be in control of all New Zealand water services decision making. Wow. Now, let me make this clear. Maori do not own water. No one owns water. No one owns rain. This is nothing other than separatism on steroids, pushed by racist separatists like Mahuta and Tukaki. Anyway, folks, I posted a link to this in the, in the description below. It's a must read. The residency status of Lee Williams, the man at the centre of threats against Māori, could be in danger. Matthew Tukaki has written to the Minister of Immigration calling for action and is demanding the residency status of Williams be revoked. Joining us now is the Chair of the National Māori Authority, Matthew Tukaki. Matthew, good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you, Fire Looking uh, Folk. And Ryan, congratulations. What an amazing human being you are. Thank you. Wow, what a slimy kiss-ass Matthew is. Thank you, Matthew. Really appreciate that. Hey, let's talk about um, this particular uh, gentleman. What is his residency status at the moment? He's a resident. He's a permanent resident of New Zealand. Yeah, look, he's a permanent resident of New Zealand. He was... Matthew Tukaki, I'm making it up every day. You sure are, Matthew. Lee Williams is a citizen. He wasn't born here, he wasn't raised here, he didn't spend his teenage years here. He came as a, as a mature-aged uh, migrant from the UK, and essentially since he landed on these shores, uh, his vitriol, his pus, uh, his, uh, his statements, his YouTube channel, you name it, uh, has been very much against Māori. And you... Yeah, so Lee must have been on YouTube for about 20 years then. Joined September 11, 2018, three years ago. You're making it up again, Matthew. You just have to tune into some of the stuff uh, to see what it is he's been spouting. Uh, he's been haranguing Māori leaders. He's been haranguing everyday Māori in the streets. Uh, he has been uh, basically taken to the airwaves uh, and, uh, quite frankly, enough is enough. So can you tell me exactly what he, well, I mean, as best you can, because I've, I've had a look at a, um, a couple of news articles about this man, and it never actually says what he is saying. Well, obviously, because he's exposing Matthew's agenda, and none of what he says incites violence. <laughs> Is what he's saying so abhorrent you don't want to repeat it, or is there a reason we're not being told what he's saying? What, what, the, you know, what? Give us a flavour of what this guy is saying. Is he criticising, you know, um, uh, 
one look, your separate treatment for Māori, or is he saying quite denigrating things about their race? Yeah, so it's a combination of the two things. I mean, there are things I will just not repeat on TV. Um, it's not made for breakfast TV. It's not made for TV more generally, um, including some of the messages that he's directed to me personally um, over, over social media. Matthew, you are a political figurehead and criticism comes with a territory. Suck it up. You don't get special treatment or special privilege. Uh, and then uh, if we put aside all those abhorrent things and, and good on the media for not reporting them, quite frankly, I think the media is doing an outstanding job on this front. Yeah, an outstanding job of hiding the truth. Uh, then there are other things such as, well, you know, uh, Māori are, are uh, affecting a takeover of this country. Um, we're going to be ruling this country. It's a it's a UN uh, Agenda 21 conspiracy. Uh, the Prime Minister's involved. All this sort of other nonsense. Now, that is bordering on the conspiracy theory nonsense. Yeah, now here is Matthew's conspiracy theory nonsense. Uh, we need development that allows indigenous peoples to exercise their right to self-determination through participation in decision-making on an equal basis. With the Sharples' turn at the podium began Māori style. Members of Kahurangi, a group of New York-based Māori, had been asked to support the minister, but weren't briefed about his speech. In fact, some members of his own party, other government ministers and the media weren't told a thing about the visit. The minister began his speech with a formal chant, not an easy thing to interpret, even with a team of UN translators. But the focus of 2,000 delegates was on him. Were you nervous about this? No, I wasn't nervous at all. I was totally excited, though. Having a speech on international record checked the minister's excitement and his tendency to improvise. But even with a translation in English, the punchline of his speech sailed over the heads of most delegates. It took another minute and a half before the news in English sank in. I come with humble heart to celebrate the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. The New Zealand government has long discussed this matter and has recently decided to support it. Our Hawaiian cousins were vocal in their praise, as were delegates on the floor. But when the news broke back home, the proverbial hit the political fan. The declaration is divisive and it is a further step for New Zealand down a path of a divided nation. So true, Rodney. Why would you sign up to something that you never intended to act on and you don't actually believe in? Supporting the declaration is a gesture they can make without giving over anything. Others, though, were all smiles. Declaration's been signed, all done and dusted, we're really happy. The media was critical of the secrecy surrounding the signing. The Māori Party received requests under the Official Information Act for all correspondence leading up to the announcement. It was UN red tape and protocol that dictated the manner and nature of how the announcement was made. Yes, folks, that is all fiction, according to Matthew. Uh, and the, the challenge with this gentleman, and I'll say it until the cows come home, um, this is not somebody that we should be granting permanent residency for. And I would also argue strongly, this is the extreme case. This is not about trying to sever debate or discussion or to have an honest conversation. I mean, heck, I'll front up with a cup of tea with, uh, with Don, Don Brash and Judith Collins are crying out loud. Um, but in this case, it is the most extreme. Yes, it's so, so extreme that Lee is still on YouTube. 
Hi there, how's it going? This is Cross the Rubicon channel and today is the 28th of July. Matthew Tukaki, who's the chair of a Maori council in New Zealand. He's a Maori separatist and he believes Maori should be first class citizens and everybody else should be second and third, third class. And white Europeans should be third class. He believes in apartheid and he believes that Maori should own everything in New Zealand, even though he's only got a little bit of Maori in him, like most Maori supremacists. Matthew Tukaki wants to stop Fonterra, which is the biggest dairy company in New Zealand worth billions, from using Maori words. Maori words like Kapiti and Kofi and Awa. He wants them stopped from using Maori words in their product. This is what kind of bloke Matthew Tukaki is because he wants them to pay Maori because this is all about money and power. I hope Fonterra tell him to bugger off, but they will capitulate like everybody in New Zealand. When Maori jump up and down about anything, everyone caves. It's got to stop in New Zealand. The white European man and these even corporations should actually grow some. Matthew Tukaki, Joe Trinder, Willie Jackson, Raweri Waititi, Debbie Nariba Packer, and thousands of other radical extremist super troffer Maori right at the very top of the tree are screwing New Zealand over. And there's not one single political party, politician, or press corporation that will take them on because they fear being called racist. Now in 1840, Maori had a language, obviously, but they didn't have a written language. Henry Williams, who was a missionary, he learned the Maori language and he put it down on paper. He put it down on paper and gave Maori their written Maori language. So it was an Englishman or a Brit who gave Maori their written language. Yeah, exactly. And the phonetic, and, and the, uh, phonetic alphabet came from Latin. Again, not Maori. And I often wonder why we don't stop Maori from using our words and their products, like honey, for example. So it's it's actually threats against it's it's inciting violence against it though it's though it's that kind of threshold yep. that you're talking about because the minister of immigration does have the power to make a call on this and to basically kick anyone out on, on character grounds. So you're saying this crosses that line and goes well beyond it. I, I think it does go well beyond it this time. Uh, and, and forgive me for saying this, and this is, it shouldn't be a message for those other people who migrate to this country and want to be involved in a, in a freestanding, democratic, open de debate and discussion. But don't come here pouring hate on, um, on the Indigenous First Nations people of this country, Māori, um, or even bordering on people of colour and brown people. But, you know, that character test is there for a reason. Yeah, so why don't you deport yourself then? I'll show this one again, folks. Someone says, Lee Williams is a citizen, and Matthew having good character says, F off up, no, F off you rabid scumbag. Take your white filth, your white filth, and pee off up the shite house. Hmm. Yes, folks, Matthew Tukaki clearly fails his own character test. But on a positive note, Labour plummeted 10% in the poll. And I would say their radical separatist agenda is driving that fall. And of course their radical hate speech laws as well. 